What's up guys? So I'm finally gonna try Staltus. I'm kind of excited to try him, but he won't have books, so it will not be perfect testing. I will definitely book him later, but we do have the Harima Tenax today, so I kind of want to save the books just in case I do happen to get her. But um, otherwise the gear is the speed defense nook gear that I've been using on other champions as well, which is kind of good gear, except that uh, it's a speed boots, but it is a pretty good speed boots, but no good ascension, but overall it's a good gear, just not the hardest hitting nook gear, but still decent one. But uh, yeah, I actually got very lucky in the last couple of days and I got several legendary books. It would almost be enough to book him and I will book him later today if I don't pull Harima from the Tenax. But it should be enough to at least try because I really want to give him a go at least in the fights. Also, I'm definitely, like I said, I'm definitely gonna pull all of my shards for Harima Tenax. I also did it the last time that she was on Tenax, so. Originally, I was actually hoping that she would be a guaranteed event. That's what I was saying on December. And I was saving my shards for a few months in case that happens, but it never did, which was kind of sad. I think they had like a break from guaranteed events for a while, and I thought that maybe I could get Kari my event, but no. Oh yeah, I guess we need to... I'm gonna have so hard time finding Staltos again. But yeah, I think I really needed another nuker because blind picking in its way in every fight is such like bad decision, but I feel like my other options are not any better, so that's why I often do it. Mm. Who should I go with? I think maybe Cardiel or Necrot, which one? Well, let's try with Cardiel. It's not looking a great team when he starts with those two picks, but yeah. So my Staltus, who isn't fully booked, he's gonna have one turn longer cooldown on his boat of the AoE nukes, and also do 20% less damage on them, so it is kind of significant. It might be issue here because this team will have a lot of healing in it. But I think we will go with Saldus, I guess. Let's try him. Uh, where is he? There. Who should I go as last one? Maybe I should go with... Um, Yeah, let's go with double reviver. If I just go with one reviver, I think it will be an issue. Uko will be so squishy, but let's go with him. I kind of need some CC or something weird to happen to win this anyway, but I was kind of hesitating about going between Uko or Python or my second Duchess because I think it's kind of plausible that he will ban my Duchess now, but yeah, I will definitely ban, in, ban the Taras in his team, no doubt. Actually, I think against Turwald Nuker, my team is pretty good. The issue is that... Yeah, never mind. Yeah, he didn't ban Rotos, so I definitely will have enough damage to kill him. Yeah, never mind. Actually, it wasn't too bad. I think some other Nuker in this comp would have been more threatening. But if it's just a single target nuker, then I think it won't be too bad. I think I should have a chance at least. Or if he picked Warlord, then I would have had to ban it and fight the Taras, then that would have been a major issue. Yeah, the, the, this should be a fine matchup for me, actually. It is even a stone skin Taras, so... 
Stone skin means it's way less damage than Savage. Can I one shot him? Nice. Oh, okay. It wasn't even close. Good. Yeah, there wasn't any buffs on him, I guess so. They the issue with those Necrot ally attacks and extra turns can often be that he clears all the buffs from himself and is very um, weak to everything. So that's why often in arena defense people will make the Necrot start with the A3 and not the A2 in order to conserve the buffs on him. And of course, like stone skin, like especially if you have two turns stone skin, you don't want to start with the ally attack. But yeah, with bolster it's not as bad, but still, people pretty much always make necrot prioritize a tree. Yeah, I should be fine. I mean, I do have two nukers after all as well, so... Yeah, I think... Wait... This is kind of Isu. That's just not dying is not great, but um, if I can get double turn Rotos and kill both of his revivers, then it should still be fine. But this is actually kind of closer than I wanted it to be. Come on, give me extra turn. Otherwise, this will be big trouble, actually. No. The Mariska reviving them with high turn meter is very big deal. I think if the revive wasn't like if it was zero turn meter revive, it would be a more a lot more balanced. But this is a very huge deal actually. Even Duchess revives everybody with no turn meter, so I think I'm gonna lose this one now. I guess. If my Rotos could have had um, X turn or if the A3 was ready, I would have been fine. I would have killed them. Marriage come with A3 and then Sifi, but now it's a big issue. I'm not sure if I have enough damage to kill the Sifi with A3, but I, my, I must try. Okay, good. Then it should still be fine. I will get another shot at <laughs> trying to kill. Marriage guy and Sifi on the same turn, but yeah. I think I will be able to heal my status enough for him to survive. It, it will be kind of close, but if Cardia can just. Okay, nice. It should be good. I mean, there's a big difference between HP scaling and defense scaling Nuker. So the HP scaling ones are going to be way tankier, but it is still slightly more tanky than normal attack scaling Nuker. Yeah, good. That was very close, but my cardial passive healing him and doing attack on Stardust turn kind of saved me. Okay, so this time, this is actually good. So Staltos is almost full turn meter. So he's gonna cut in between his Turwald. And now I can kill both Maritska and Sifi on the same team. So now I actually am fine. But it was very close. And definitely if the Staltos was lower cooldowns, then it would help me a lot. But like I said, I will definitely book him for the next video. I will not be able to fully book him, but almost fully probably i will actually i think i'll get one book from the cvc right so probably i will get him fully booked in a couple of days i think he needs 
11 books or something and I got 7, so I'm almost there. But if it just so happens that I get Harima, which is not likely with this small number of shards, but just because of that I want to save till after the event, so... This video is kind of not the full potential on Staltos, but I still want to use him. I mean, I definitely don't think Staltos is a top tier nuker, but he is better than average for sure. And I do need something that, especially Harima teams are big issue for me, because Initve can't crit on them at all because of Harima passive. And Rodos is gonna get his damage massively reduced by Harima, and also weak hit on her, so... My third option will be Ronda, which is kind of okay, but I'm always gonna go after them, or almost always, and she's just gonna get one shot anyway, so... Maybe I should go with Mortu as my second nuker against this guy. I actually... I do know him, he's Finnish like me, so... Yeah, here I'll definitely... And I do have the... Arix gear now as well, so... It's possible that I will go with both Arix and Mortu. Maybe to catch him off guard if he goes with... Ah, he's probably not gonna go with Double Warlord, yeah. He's just gonna go with the Warlord and force me to ban his Harima or something. Damn. If I had Married Sky, I, would, I could go without Reviver and fight his locked out team with some nukers like Arex. What should I do here? Yeah. But let's try this. I'll go with Mortu as well. I mean, I don't think I have really any chance against this guy, but let's try to surprise him and maybe there's a tiny chance that we can win. He's definitely gonna go before me. I mean, he can still pick Sifir or something. And even if he doesn't, yeah, he picks. And he's fast. And he's gonna threaten me with that lockout as well, so... I didn't pick shields, which is, which is kind of issue against that Heprock. But if I can get revive on death, it might be able to work out. Now, who I, who do I want to ban? I was kind of planning to not ban the lockout. Yeah, let's let's try this. Let's ban the Harma. Yeah, he did ban the Mortu, but I do have Arix and Rotos, which both can kind of function even when being locked out. And if I'm able to survive for a couple turns, then I can heal myself, but probably Hebrak is just gonna cuck me. I think Rotos can survive one turn against Hebrak, maybe. If he doesn't destroy the bone armor, never mind. That might actually be it. He's not full HP and he lost one stack of the bone armor, so I don't think he can actually take the double hit from Heprock. Well, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe there's a small chance, but... If Cardiel is able to get revive on death back in time, it might be enough, but he got his turn meter reduced by the Warlord, so... he probably won't be able to do it. Uh... Uh, maybe, maybe, well, yeah, Rotos doesn't have bone armor, so I don't think he can survive anymore. Maybe I might be able to rota rotate the revive on Duchess, we shall see. So yeah, if I kill it now, the Sifi is gonna revive it with full turn meter, but maybe if I can get the extra turn, then maybe it will be okay. And yeah, never mind, he still has the <laughs> UD gain it as well. Yeah, this is a very hard matchup for me. Fast lockouts is just something that they honestly should have never put into this game, because it kind of um, destroys 
any kind of strategy that you have pretty much so unless they design the champions completely differently and many of them will be able to function while being locked out but nobody can really do it so yeah that's it there's no chance <clears throat> um maybe i should have picked bolster necrot instead of cardell if cardell didn't get his turn meter reduced by warlord it might have been able to put the revive on death and stall a bit but probably necrot would have been better yeah I'm I'm getting my turn meter reduced by the Warlord and also slept by the Sifi, so... No chance that I'm getting any turns in this fight. Of course, this account has, like, way better champions and spending than me, so... It is kind of natural that I will not have any chance, but still. I wish I would have Heprak or Candy or some of those ATR options at least. But yeah, no chance. I kind of tried it, but he just banned the Mortal, which was a big issue for me. <laughs> Maybe if I had Resistance Lockout or something weird, but I don't, so... Yeah, I, I shouldn't have picked them. Actually, no, the, the Darts' pick fa was fine. That wasn't the main issue here. I was thinking if I should have gone with Python, but I'm not really sure if, if it would have been any better. My Python is maybe 10 or 20 speed, even slower than these Darts', so it definitely wouldn't get any turns against Warlords. But yeah, it, it gets pretty tough when you get above 1800 in Live Arena. Another Warlord team, and also Speed team. Okay, so maybe this time we will go with Necro to get some shields on us. Oh, you see, he's gonna bomb me again. Um, yeah, this is kind of... unconventional team for me but his team isn't very tanky so if I'm able to get my cooldowns back and survive then I might do fine and I'm also thinking that um, can I just ban the lockout in this matchup I have two shields so I will definitely be able to pull off a revive now yeah I think yeah I hope he doesn't ban this Oh, so, uh, yeah, he went to Necro. I think I can still probably survive the bombs, though. Maybe my Rotos will cut in at some point. Okay, so if this dot is survived, then the other one definitely will, but it won't even be close. I think it's gonna go before the mortal, sadly. I wish it would have been the other way around. Oh, wait, wait, he reduced the turn meter. Ah, oh, okay. It would have been funny if my mortal actually went before that's just because of that um, term meter reduction, but I think 
he's still gonna one shot even these judges and I'm not gonna be able to make a comeback here. Yeah, yeah, it's still not good enough, sadly. If I had the Necrot in this matchup, then then I would have had double shields and I would have been fine, but... Wait, wait. <laughs> can I pull off another revive? I think he can kill it. No? Okay, nice. Yeah, this is kind of funny if we win against a mega way like this, but... It's kind of looking good <laughs> at this point. If my Rotos can get a turn, then I win at that point for sure. It's yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh fuck, he's getting the bombs back up on us. Come on, just give Rotos a... Oh no. Oh, it's so much faster than me. I'm not able to do anything. <laughs> yeah, both of my judges has took one turn and nobody else has taken any turns against this guy. It was very close. <laughs> If this Rotos was a bit faster, maybe if I had uh, um, 10 speed from 6 star blessing, which I will get at some point, then maybe it would have been fast enough to get a turn. And if he just got one turn, then I will definitely kill the Leorios and Arbiter in the same turn and win the fight. But yeah, no turns. If I had Necrot in this team instead of one of the Nukers, I would definitely be able to do it. But the issue is that. Um, if you win one, if you pick one nuker, then he's gonna ban it. So I will have to go with two nukers against this guy. Maybe the Mortu wasn't the best choice after all. Maybe I need to think about something else. I think the slow Mortu doesn't work against a team like this. Or maybe I should have a fast Mortu. Yeah, but I was kind of not sure if I was gonna ban the lockout at the start of the fight. So. I went with the Morto, but maybe I should have gone with Arix or something. I'm not really sure if anything would have made difference, but but next time I will try Arix, I guess. It it was kind of close. At least we got some bombs off, and we were able to do something against him. But yeah, when you hit the 1800s right now in the live arena, there's some kind of mechanic that these people are not gaining points and you're meeting those like people that have spent tens of thousands that are in like 2k range and those matches are matchups are very hard for me. Maybe this fight will be a bit easier, hopefully. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. This looks more reasonable. Uko has a very good matchup against Leorius in general because he can block his um um put block buffs on him and won't be able to get the unkillable from his passive. So I generally like to pick Uko against Leorios. And even just the attack down is very good. Hmm. Maybe we will go with... Um, well, in this fight we could definitely use the Init as well, but... Let's go with the Status actually. As long as I can find it in time. Okay, so Status and what else? I guess I'll just go with my own bolster necro. Oh no, let's go with the bolster duchess actually. Yeah. It's likely that he will ban this duchess or necro, so whichever I picked here, I think he might have banned like either this or Ukko, but if I don't get the bolster duch okay, it's fine. Now he won't be able to place the block buffs on me, which is very important in this fight. He 
His team isn't ultra tanky here. So Status is definitely able to like threaten him with damage. Against a very tanky team with Sifi and something else, it will be very different, but this one will definitely die at some point. I don't think the Rodos is gonna die, but okay. But we were able to block Leorio's passive, which I actually wanted to do, but what? Okay, I guess I'm lapping him a good amount anyway, so it doesn't matter. We're not gonna let this Leorios have any turn anyway, so... I thought that he was gonna cut in between because I moved with multiple champions in a row, so... There is kind of mechanics in this game that... Um, even if all of your champions are faster than all of the enemy champions, that doesn't mean that all of them will go before the enemy, because... There is kind of um, mechanics that the turn meter works in the way that if you have multiple champions going in row, then you need to like um, have way more speed than enemy for it to happen. Because if they are anywhere close, then they will cut in at some point, even if your champions are faster. I think it's actually a very good design, but it is so obscure mechanic that nobody really like many people know about it but the specifics about it is not something that you can really know in your head but there is calculators for it this is a double heater can i kill the rotos he does have shields though okay no But yeah, he definitely should have decent matchup against Rotos teams. Not like incredible counter, but okay matchup. And I will definitely need a lot, meet a lot of Rotos teams. So I need something like him. I think the, the bigger issue why I actually want to use him or something else is because of Harima teams. But often they will pick Harima and Rotos together as well. So. Is the Rotos gonna one versus four me at this point? It can definitely happen, and it has happened to me many times, but I guess not. But yeah, I'm actually thinking that I might skip the next fusion event or the fragment fragment event. I don't generally like to skip any of them, but I really do, do need a break to farm like um, oils and gather up resources for the next fusion. And maybe I will skip this one. We will see. It's also partly because I do want to pull all of my shards today for Harima and there's a good chance that I won't be able to do the summon event because of it so if I'm able to do it then I will do it but I think probably that won't be possible I mean the chance that I get Harima with those few shards is very low I might not even get any legendary champions but I must give it a go Um, uh, let, let's go with cardio, yeah. I could really go either way, like second reviver, hook or cardio, so in these kind of situations it's always a coin toss what I do. Okay, so he's again picking a kind of squishy team. If I just can get the turn with Init, uh, then he can kill them, but should I just go with Staltus this time anyway to try him out? Maybe he can survive the candy AoE nuke with some shields on him. 
Um, I guess this will be a tank test as well. That can I kill the judges? For the last one, should we just go with Necrot? I guess. Yeah, let's go with um, past Necrot. Of course, he can ban my judges in this fight, but his team can definitely kill me even with judges in the team. So I'm not too worried if he does it. But yeah, we will ban the UDK, of course. Crew Traxa deals so much damage that if he gets turns, she will definitely kill my team no matter how many revivers or how tanky it is. But of course, she is very weak and maybe my fast Stylus will kill her before she gets turned. Not if she's protected by the Necrot, but maybe in a couple turns or if I can kill the Necrot once. He is kind of a um, decently high point, so maybe this will be a hard fight. Yeah, let's start with the revive on death because likely this guy will have a reaction on him anyway. Yeah. This, I guess, the small issue is that I don't have any whales or anything on me, and this crew Truxa is gonna decimate my Rotos. I guess the fast... Um, can I cut in? With the fast Necrot? No, okay. Never mind. Um, even if I do protect him, then he's still gonna die, I guess. That's not very good. I don't think there's any way that Rodos can survive now the crew trucks are hit even, even with the Necrot protection. Yeah, maybe I should have gone with double darts as well. Wait. Oh, he's still gonna kill the Rodos, right? No? I'm pretty sure he could have killed the Rodos, but... Yeah, okay, never mind. Maybe going without two revivers was a big mistake in this fight. Yeah, I'm just not able to kill them at the start because they have reaction and and now it's too late to do anything. Yeah. Staldus isn't able to make that big comp against, against this guy, so... The, the issue is that if you don't leave these fights, you don't see the co them in the combat log, so I kind of want to play the fights just in the end, even if it takes a few extra seconds so that I can actually look at the matchups later. But yeah, I should have just gone with double dodges here. The fight would have lasted a bit longer and maybe something could have happened. But that guy was a bit higher points than me, so I was kind of expecting them to be like in reaction and well geared, so. If I had crew drugs, I would definitely use her. She would be able to kill Harima teams even with the Harima passive. Wait, wait, she's demon spawn. Ne never mind, she definitely <laughs> she definitely wouldn't be able to because she, she wouldn't even crit on Harima. Uh, that thing is actually pretty huge because there are so many good demon spawn nukers like um, Heprock and Initve and uh, Krutraxa. Is there some others as well? Anyway. Harima is a big pain for me. I really wish I could get her as well and make enemies suffer like I do. 
Wait, did we fight this guy before? Is this the one guy that we actually won against? <laughs> um... Yeah, let's go with the bolster necrot first. My lips are like super dry. I'm not sure why. Um, I guess we could go with UDK. We don't really know what his last pick is gonna be, but. Yeah, I just go with that. Maybe this time we will go with the double Duchess. Wait, wait, wait. never mind. Either Duchess or UDK. I need to pick one, not not both. Um, should I go with Staldos or Init? Let's go with Staldos again. Or should I just go with my own Ukko against him? Let, let's go with my Ukko. Let's go with my Ukko. But wait, ah, oh, fuck. Did I accidentally <laughs> remove the Staldos? What? I picked the Staldos and then I removed him and picked Ukko. Okay, never mind. I guess I'll just leave this one. Well, let, let's see what he does first, but surely he's gonna ban the Rodos, right? Yeah, okay. Ah. Uh. Fuck me. Wait, what happened there? I picked the Staldos and then I double clicked it and then I thought that I already had the Staldos in my team and then I picked Ukko. Was that what happened? Because I definitely did go pick the Staldos, but I was running out of the time and then I then I took Ukko instead. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, after this fight I definitely need to go put the markings on Saldos so I don't lose the fights because I'm looking for him in the vault and getting confused. This would be so simple, like you just need to be able to make it so that all of your arena champions are first in the order or you can choose the team order. I have no idea why they can't just do it, this is so stupid, because if you don't... Um, if you have different markings on, on some champions, or if they have different levels of empowerment, then they will still be in different order. Like I have two Necrets, I can't put the same marking on both of them. So, and now the other Necret is behind the epics. This is so stupid. Um. Anyway, what should I pick? Yeah, let's just go with Necrot because I I have no idea what his team is gonna be. But yeah, so here is my legendary champions with the arena marking. Then there is like some epic champions without even the arena marking before my legendary champions with fucking speed marking. It's so stupid. And then Staldos is all the way over here. Okay, so this is gonna be a very hard team. I'm not really sure if Staldos is gonna have enough damage against him. I mean, I'll try him, but he's not going to, so... And if I go with Ukko here, my team will be very squishy, so... I should go with Double Reviver. But now, when he does ban the um, Rotos, I'm just not sure if Staldos can really kill this team, but I guess we will try. But this is the kind of teams that you will meet a lot in Live Arena, so... Yeah, because if I go with one Reviver, then he's gonna ban my only Reviver. 
And um, Daras is just gonna one shot anybody in my team, and he's able to take many hits from my team. So I do need revives in order to like have any kind of chance in this fight. Well, his his revivers don't look ultra tanky. Maybe Staltos can do enough damage to threaten them. We will see. I mean, he does have the Harima passive and see if he heals, so it, it won't be easy. Oh, it's a stone skin Harima. I mean, that is kind of good for me because it's not going to do that much damage, but I'm not really sure if, like, his team is just so much better. I don't think that is going to help me a lot. Let's see if I can one-shot the CV. Like, she has no buffs on her and she isn't in an ultra tanky build, but probably I still can't kill her, right? Oh yeah, it's not even close. Probably not even without the Harima passive, I'm not quite sure. Maybe with it would it would have been enough. Ah, too bad. I was hoping to be able to protect that Rotos. He's probably gonna be in a limbo that he doesn't get any turns now. Yeah, not even close. Well, my status is kind of fast, but the issue is that he has Sifi turn meter boost and Sifi increase speed on his team, so I'm still not faster than him because of that. Well, at least Staldos is staying alive and doing something, even, even though he's not really killing the enemy team just yet. Also, he doesn't have Mariska in his team, so at least when I do damage on Taras, he's gonna, I guess, yeah, I guess he can remove it with, with his AoE nuke anyway, but actually, yeah, I'm killing him so slowly that he's definitely gonna be able to remove it himself anyway. If my Rotos wasn't constantly dying then then no, but he hasn't gotten any turns so far. And if I just kill this Harima then see if he's gonna revive it with full turn meter. <laughs> ah this is so stupid. Realistically, even if I did have the Harima against this guy, I don't have increased defense from Sifi or something, so I'm not sure if even that could be enough to win a, like a count like this. So And it is kind of hard to try different kinds of things when the enemies are only using the top champions. There isn't really that much room for me to use like D tier or like untiered champions. Okay, I think this is just gonna be a bot fight. Yeah. So now I lost many times in row and I'm now I'm just getting a free win from a bot, which kind of feels bad to be honest.
Yeah, so he's if he, if he picks four nukers and a reviver, and he bans my duchess, then he should definitely be a bot. Who knows? Maybe I will lose the bot as well because he does have some very good champions in his team. I wish they would give me some of those instead of the bots. Yeah, I don't want to think too much about my team against bots, but also it would be kind of stupid if I actually lost to him, so... I mean, I can definitely lose to these bots if they pick the right champions, but not against this one. Wait, so he didn't pick any reviver at all. I thought maybe this is this counts as his like, reviver or support. I thought there has to be one reviver in the team, but still, this is a definitely a bot team. Yeah, and he banned my first pick. Anyway, so the only players that I can win against are bots. Yeah, thank you, Plarium. I'm feeling very good now. Thanks a lot. Thank you for this charity win. But yeah, there's still a couple hours left until the 10 next event, I guess. I'm just gonna pull all of my shards on it. And if not, then next time I will book the status. But against the um, second last fight, I mean, I mean, even if my status was booked, then I definitely wouldn't have had enough damage to kill him. As you saw, my Saltus did like um, less than half of Sifi's damage, I mean health, when she didn't have any buffs on her, so... And of course my Saltus is in speed boots and not defense boots, but um, it does have very good gear still. And it is very fast, like 250 speed. Maybe I need to start using Rx more, maybe he will be a hidden trick that I can use sometimes, but definitely not against those Harima teams though. Maybe I should try it once, but it's not enough damage against them, but maybe if I go with Rx, Taldos and Rotos against some of those guys. TV and Taras again. Yeah, so I don't think I want to pick Stalus here because. Uh, wait, is my run diamond geared right now? I don't recall. Uh, maybe I'll go with triple reviver. No, let's. I need the second reviver against this guy. Uko doesn't count because he's not tanky, so. Maybe I will still go with Initve just because... Yeah, okay, let's go with Initve. Maybe I should have picked... Now that I can see his last two picks, I should have picked 
UDK instead of Python. But if I had him, then I think my team would be pretty good against him. I mean, not good. Good is maybe not the right word, but it will be the best team that I can pick against him. Yeah, I still definitely do want to ban the Taras. Actually, it's not too bad. I think um, him picking two revivers here was kind of pointless. If he just picked um, Lockout or UDK or Arima instead of this Duchess, then his team would have been way better against me. Now I can ban the Taras and he's not threatening me like ultra much, so I, I will definitely get turns in this fight and I can start start killing people. Okay, so so he does have bolster on him. I can't remove it, but I still want to go with the A2 and maybe I get some stuns or maybe I remove the stone skin. Yeah, nice. Because as we know now, the Ukko A2 has double chance to stun the enemy compared to the A1, so... Even if I do place decrease attack on this Rotos, it's not going to do anything because of the CV passive. But yeah, I think I should probably be fine in this fight. It's going to be... It's going to take a while, but... Um, I think with my superior gear on Rotos, I can eventually finish this fight. I just need to focus on stacking HP against him and then I will kill everybody in a few turns at one point. So if I had UDK instead of this Python, then it would be even better. He, he should have picked UDK against me as well instead of this Duchess. I wonder if I can one-shot the CV. Probably not, but... Yeah, let's use H2 on her and see if I can kill her. Usually they are not built as tanky as Duchesses, but this one does look to be very high HP CV. Yeah, not, not quite enough. Come on, let, let's see a stun on the CV. No. Oh, oh, we oh we did get it. Nice. Well, that's actually very good then. That that's kind of funny. So first I saw one debuff on her, and then Uko got cheaped, and then I saw the two other debuffs on her. Oh fuck. That Rotos did a num number on me. I can't hit him so. I think he's if he... Does it still have the revive left or not? I'm not... Do they both still have the revives? She might actually have it. I'm not sure. Yeah, she, she does have it because I stunned him, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to stop those revives going off because both Maritska and Sifi are gonna revive the teammates with turn meter. Like Maritska isn't gonna revive them with full turn meter, but it's almost full, so Yeah that that is kind of dumb that on top of all of the many things that she does she 
does survive them, I think, with 75% turn meter. I, I will look it up after this fight because I don't want to be wrong about it, but I'm pretty sure it's either 50 or 75, but in either case it should be zero. So reviving teammates with turn meter is just a very huge deal. Even Sifi should have her revive nerfed as well. Yeah, so if I don't use the A3 on the Sifi, he's, she's not going to die, so we will just go with this, but I wasn't really able to do what I wanted in that turn because of the whale. Wait. Do I have... Can he kill it or is he just above 50%? Okay, it, yeah, nice. Sometimes that thing gets very confusing and I have no idea where we're at. Oh, I got block revile. Nice. Yeah, that's what I was saying at the start of the fight, that I need to focus on stacking the A2 and... I was confident that my well geared Rotos will do pretty good in basically a mirror matchup not not a mirror but we had very similar teams <laughs> so today i think we had two wins yeah, okay three wins this one doesn't count so basically we had three wins and five losses so yeah yeah the the bot bot win doesn't count i mean we did fight against like very good account so I guess I shouldn't really complain about it too much I mean it's tons of losses but yeah this is definitely not turning out to be Astaldos montage but it is pretty much what I was expecting from him. I mean, he's not a bad champion, but the issue is that against those top teams, you can only kill them with very specific champions, and he's not going to have enough damage. It's definitely better than Iron Brago, but the reason I was using Iron Brago is because he was pulled from Plan Boss team that I used years ago, but... But I will still book Staltus just after we get the event. I will definitely do it. He's probably still going to do a bit more damage than Samson, even though Samson is way tankier, but probably still maybe slightly better, better pick than him. I guess I did put Samson in like the top of the D tier and Staltus in the bottom of C tier on my list, I think. Oh yeah, I, I did do that, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah. For sure, this list is gonna change over time, and I will probably update it as well, but yeah. For now, I do actually like the rankings. I don't I don't really take anything back, except I do agree that I should have included Constantine in the list, but many people want me to put Constantine in B tier, and that's not gonna happen. He will be low C tier, I think. That's that's as far as I will go. And but by the way, many people were saying that Constantine does way more damage than Initve. It's actually not that simple because um, uh, in A1 on on the Constantine A1, wait, let what should I pick? On the Constantine A1, if you fulfill the conditions, and the enemy has debuffs on them, then it does it harder. But basically, the other skills hit less than Inita. Wait, where is it? 
And that's because in it the books higher and if you get 10% damage from books, that's just overall 10% damage increase. So it is bigger than it seems. And Initve does have 300, 300 higher base attack than um, Constantine as well, which is a big deal. So his other skills aren't actually hitting harder than Initve. Except the AoE skill. Well, they won as well if the conditions are met, but yeah. It's, it is very close, but the init the A2, which is his main thing in Live Arena, it definitely hits harder than the constant in single target skill that has multiplier of 6, I think. But yeah. And of course, the main thing isn't the damage, but the, the passives. But constant in damage isn't actually a lot better than init was, so... Um, this is kind of an interesting team. Ah, uh, no, 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 fuck, do I have time? Maybe I should have gone with... with the Bolster Necrot instead, but maybe it's too late. That one wasn't in Bolster anyway, so if I did end up picking it... Then that would have been terrible, but as long as I can cut in here with Ukko or Cardiel, I should be fine. So, well, maybe not fine is the right word, but I I have a chance if that happens. So, surely his charge it isn't speed tuned with Ramantu and like uh, Sifi. Yeah. Okay. So wait, even Ramantu isn't speed tuned. Is this gonna be a nuke Ramanto? It's only in one piece stone skin and it's not very fast. But yeah, let's go with A2 so that we have higher chance to stun somebody. Ah, oh, fuck. That's unfortunate. I could have gone with the... Okay, this looks bad. This looks very bad. I could have gone with the decrease attack as well. Wait, wait, okay. I guess my fast Saltus build is coming in clutch. I hope he doesn't get feared. But yeah, I could have gone with the decrease at that on Jordi as well, but I was hoping to land some stuns on them and remove the increased speed buff, but I guess his team wasn't very fast, so even with the Sifi. Yeah, at this point I should be fine, and Staldus was actually very good in this fight. He was able to go before his charge it and was able to take one hit from Harima. Wait, this, this is looking kind of bad. I hope he doesn't kill the Duchess, but... Oh, he does. Oh, that wasn't even close. Do I still have a chance? I can definitely kill the Sifi. Even with the Harima, because he doesn't have any buffs on him and it's kind of low HP. What? Oh. Fuck. Probably I didn't proc Helm Smasher there. I was certain that I would be able to kill it. <laughs> ah, damn it. I think if I were able to kill that Sifi, I would have been fine. Or I had a chance at least, depending on the weak hits on Harima, but... Damn it. Well, you always risk the gamble with Ukko that he gets polymorphed, so he does risk it as well with all of his debuff champions in the team. Maybe I should have gone with the Bolster Necrot instead of this Ukko, though. It was kind of looking good because his team wasn't actually very fast other than the Sifi. So I was able to get a turn in between with uh, Staldos, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get any turns at all against him, so... He would just be better off with... Um, like, um, what's what's the word? Having the charge it speed tune with the, with the Sifi, and going instantly after her, and not using the Ramandu. And he might have just been able to one-shot my team before I did anything against him, but yeah. 
Okay, so this is another familiar matchup, but probably probably not the easy one. Um, should I go with? Uh, I think I'll go with double stone skin reviver and cardial tactic against this guy. He definitely knows my champion, so I'm not able to surprise him with any picks. He knows I'm slow and he knows that I have in it, then I will use Rotos, so... Oh, he's also using Cardial. I'm definitely gonna use it, use it against him. Should I go with Ukko as well? Yeah, I guess I should definitely go with Inita in this fight. The worst thing that he can pick here is like Paras and Lockout. I'm not really sure if he does have them. Okay, so... It doesn't look horrible. I mean, I will definitely go with Necret as my last pick, I think. I'll go with this slow one against this guy, yeah. So that it doesn't die to the AoE nukes. <clears throat> Hope, hopefully that this. Um, I'm not really sure, this could go either way. But, but yeah, even though I might skip this fusion, generally... Oh, nice. Generally, I do go for all of them. And um, even if I'm not going to use them just for faction guardians or token trader. And generally, I do advise people to do all of the fusions if you can. But it, it is kind of a gamble. Like, oftentimes you might never have any use for a fusion and they, they take long time and you're not able to do much else in the game for a month, so it does kind of suck. But this one is going to be a fragment event though, which are way easier than the traditional fusions, so... It is kind of up to you, but both options are definitely available that you do it or not, but... I'm still kind of 50-50 on this. Ah, maybe I should have used A2 actually. I was kind of saving it, but that didn't make any sense. I think I can just kill these charges. I have attack buff, so yeah. Okay, this was a bit easier fight. I'm not sure if he has Sifi, but... Those speed teams are very threatening to me, so... If he had a fast Sifi and Lockout and his charge it, and maybe he also picked UDK or Harimo, those types of teams I can't really beat against, so... I'm not sure if he can do one of those teams, but if he can, then he should do it next time against me. Yeah, I definitely want to go with Necret against this guy, but um, maybe I will go with both Necret and Ukko. Yeah. The, 
depending what he picks as the last champions here, we might actually go with Saltos in this fight. Yeah, Staldos should have enough damage to kill this team if I can just get turns. And his fast build might actually be good against this guy, so... It will kind of come down to the Ukko RNG as well. And his speeds, like, depending how fast his charge it is. If it's really fast, then it's gonna be issue for me. I don't have a lot of polymorph on my team though, which is not not nice. If I do get polymorph, I should probably put Staltos in polymorph as well. I mean, if I do get blessing on him. There's no defense or uh, blessings anyway. I mean, there is one that does, doesn't give you crit damage, but there is no nuker defense blessings. Okay, good. So the fast Staltos build is act again kind of coming in cl clutch, and I can kill the charge it before it gets a turn. The Leorius is going to nuke me very hard now, but my Darts does have stone skin still, so I should be fine. Oh, Staltos was able to take that pretty well as well. Maybe we can get few wins in the end and kind of gain points. I did get some very hard fights at the, at the start, so... It's probably not gonna be this hard every time, as it was today. Yeah, I was thinking about doing the A2 on Ukko, but that would have been stupid. It's better to protect the Duchess, and I had the uh, second AO AOE skill on Staltos anyway, so... It does feel kind of nice to use Staltos, because I haven't been using champions that have multiple AOE nukes in a very long time, and having that is very good here. It, it's often very big deal. Especially against a squishy team like this. Nice, that um, ally protection was very important there. That one guy hit my uh, Duchess, like, was it 269k with the charged A3? So it will dec definitely decimate my Duchess without protection. Dude, 269k is so, so huge hit. Oh, it's somebody with very high points again, so probably the champions are not going to be easy for us. I'm not sure if we fought this guy before or not. Maybe we did fight him in the start of the video. Ah, uh, this team doesn't look good. Staldos definitely will not have enough damage to finish off this team, so... He's not an option here, I have to go with Initve, even though he can't crit on the Harima. But maybe I can kill the Revivers first, we will see. Probably not though. Never mind. Let's let's give Staldos a go. Let's go with Ukko and Staldos. At least Ukko will provide some like um, removal of the buffs and let Staldos do more damage. So we will see.
Okay, he did ban the Ukko, which kind of makes sense, but... At least we're able to do some damage in this fight. I did get my Rotos, which doesn't happen all the time. And in this matchup, probably both of these snookers, or definitely they will get turns, so... Some fights I don't get any turns at all. I guess this isn't the <laughs> this isn't really what I was talking about because now he's gonna die before he gets an actual turn against something that that isn't the um, stone skin, and I probably will not be able to like um, even when I do revive him, he's gonna die before he gets a turn again. So might be endless cycle. Oh, ah, uh, almost. Yeah, no, not even able to 1-8 speed the Leorius. Well, I do have one more AoE nook on him. Fuck, if I, when I revive this Rodos now, then he's gonna get one shot. But if I don't revive him, then he's just gonna say he's AoE nook, so I still must... Oh, nice. Necret got in the perfect time. Now this is actually looking pretty decent. Maybe I can make a comeback here. Yeah, the Leorius is definitely gonna get hit hard now because he's low HP. But maybe my... If he doesn't get the Whale back up, maybe my Rotos can kill him with A3 before he gets another turn. Okay, nice. Um. Oh yeah, now he's gonna get revived with full HP though. I mean full turn meter. There's no way that I can kill the Sifi, but... Let's try to kill the Harima just to get the revives out. N nice. Probably... He's gonna revive the Leorius with full turn meter and destroy me. It might already be over. Wait. He made a mistake there. He shouldn't have used the uh, Darts' revive. Now he didn't get Leorius with full turn meter and he didn't kill my Darts' instantly. So this gave me several turns of time to try to fight against him. That was a huge mistake by his part. He's probably like thinking to himself right now that what did I do? The full turn meter revive is just so powerful. More so in live arena than it has been in classic arena before. I definitely can't kill it with the Harima passive, but A2 is not on cooldown, so or off cooldown. I don't have a ton of heals in my team, so I definitely need to start getting kills soon. But um, too bad he does have the whale. I want to kill the Sifi first and not Darts because Sifi still has the revive. Oh, I get I did get decreased cooldown with the mastery. So next turn, Rotos can do a 3. Maybe I will have enough damage to kill the Sifi. Maybe if Staldus also does the AoE nuke, it will be enough. I'm not sure if he already has his skills back or no. I think maybe. Oh, he would have it if I had the books, I guess. Yeah, probably not enough to kill the Sifi actually now. Let's not... Wait, oh, I didn't get... I, go, I got the A2 reduced and not the A3. I thought that I would have the A3 cooldown back already. Okay, so le let's just kill the Duchess, I guess. But I'm kind of hanging in here for a while. If that Sifi didn't get the protection from Necret just before the um, Leroy's turn, that would have been already game over, but... It kind of lasted for a very long time. 
I don't think I can kill her, but let's try. Yeah. Wait, can I kill her with the ally attack? Probably not, there's no defense buff. Oh, I was, nice. Can I make a comeback? Actually, Teleorius might destroy me next turn with his AoE nook. Maybe my Staltus can move before him because my Staltus is fast. Oh, so close, so close. We all, almost had this team. I mean, if I had like Leorius on my team or Candy, then I would have definitely won it and it would have been a lot easier, but almost. It was kind of close. It was a ticking time bomb, but sadly we didn't get it in time. But yeah, I don't want to get too negative. Of course, it's hard to get to create a very balanced game. And maybe Plarium will use this um, all the data that they get from Live Arena and maybe finally try to balance the PvP in this game. They could definitely do it, I guess, if if it's a, if it's a priority for them, so and I hope that it will be. They were saying that the last year was gonna be the year of PvP, and I guess Live Arena was <clears throat> meant to be released last year. So maybe that's still on the table that they're gonna focus on PvP a lot more this year. Yeah, so first pick UTK, I mean, he definitely knows my team as well. I mean, I, mean, I, I know who this guy is, so... Um, if I'm not wrong, I mean, he's a Twitch streamer. I mean, these names are a bit confusing because it's not the same name that, name that he has on Twitch, but I'm pretty sure this is... Um, let's see if he's streaming right now. Okay, he's not, but I'm pretty sure this is a streamer, though. Yeah, I kind of want to go with Ukko, but I can't do it now because um, I already picked Cardiel. I think we'll go with Staldos and... Uh... Maybe Pytheon as the last pick. Oh, a plus for Yannicka. Um, what do I want to pick? Well, I think either way it's not the fight I can win, but um, I guess I'll go with Uko. Okay, yeah, it's him. I had to check his old videos because I wasn't sure about the name, but it's this guy from Twitch. Bison. It is kind of confusing because he has different name in game, so I can't be quite sure. I think I'll still have to ban the UDK. I want to ban Harima, but if I don't ban the UDK, then I'm not going to do anything in this fight for many turns. But yeah, this guy is a fellow arena player that like um, 
always pushes flat, so I do know him pretty well. He used to be in IPR at one point, and he does stream, so I am pretty familiar with him. Uh, maybe I should have gone with the revive on death because this if if no no okay never mind this is actually great so even though he revived Yannicka with full turn meter but I already had Staltus with like enough turn meter to cut in as long as I didn't weak it yeah that was perfect so yeah let's go with the A2 but if this does weak it then yeah I'm not actually gonna steal any HP which is kind of interesting mechanic, but the Rotos A2 works exactly like any debuff skill, so you don't want to get weak hit on. That's kind of funny, so the Harima did AoE skill and got frostbitten, but then my um, my Rotos counter attacked him, and then it removed it from the, I think it's called Resurgent Mastery, it removed the debuff because he took damage and it has 50% chance to remove the bus if that happens, so that is kind of funny. So many things going on at once. Let's see if he messaged me. And, ah, okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of messages. Like, I'm not, of course, looking at the messages when I'm doing the video. And often the people that I fight message me because many of them I do know. So I was looking if he messaged me, but he didn't. But I think. Some of the other people that I fought did message me. It is kind of interesting to meet people that you know, because in classic arena it's not quite the same, but here you can actually fight people that you know. And of course, as like long time arena player, I do know many of these people that I'm meeting, but I wish I was able to compete against them a bit better. I mean, this fight is kind of close. I like this type of fights. At least I have a chance here and it is kind of uh, a back and forth, even though he's probably going to win this one. But many of those other fights are not back and forth at all. Like, they just have two good champions and nothing that I do matters against them. But this one is kind of almost okay. I mean, I wish I had better champions, but I'm sure he does as well because he's using Yannicka, so... But he does have, like, I mean, some of the other ones that I wish I had. Anyway, it was a pretty good fight and at least we got some of kills against him, but it wasn't quite enough. Maybe this is going to be extremely depressing week that uh, I finish gold 5 on reset and then I get destroyed in live arena by these top accounts. Probably the same accounts that were hitting me on reset because in the last 10 minutes I got hit 23 times in my defense and like most of the fights were like Taras and Maritska teams just autoing my defense so against those ones I didn't get any wins and against the other ones not counting Taras and Mariska teams I had a very good win ratio I just got hit so many times I, I was watching at my clan mates logs and people who do have Taras and Mariska like one guy got hit three times and he pushed for 40 minutes and I pushed for like 25 minutes or something and I got hit, I'm not really sure how many hits I got in total, but in the last 10 minutes I got 23 hits. And he basically pushed twice longer than me, and he was much higher ranking, and then he got hit three times, which is which is because he has Taras and Mariska. So, um, what do I want to pick here? Maybe I will go with Necrit against this guy because otherwise it will be very hard for me to get any turns with my nukers. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's just go with Init Van and see what he picks. This team has too much healing, so Staltos wouldn't be able to end this fight. Oh, okay. He picks like incredibly. This is basically the best team that you can do against me. Maybe maybe with Harima instead of Isle of these. He, he could just go with... Um, well, number one, maybe, maybe this is the best one. This one or Harima instead of Rotos. That's basically the best team that you can pick against me. So... Yeah, probably it will still be worse with Harima or maybe Harima and Lockout, so I can't ban m multiple of those champions. Being able to ban UDK in this fight is pretty good for me, so it isn't actually that bad. He should have had Lockout instead of one of these revivers, or yeah, one of these re revivers. And he didn't ban my Rotos, which was a big mistake. He definitely should have banned it. Maybe he was expecting for me to ban his Taras, and that's why he didn't ban my Rotos. But if my Rotos can get turns against him, then I definitely can win this fight. Yeah, th this is actually not too bad. And my team is uh, like the best champions that I have against a team like this. So, And he didn't ban my UDK, which is kind of interesting choice yeah actually I was getting worried a bit too much he has very good champions but the team that he drafted isn't isn't probably the best one that he could use against me but maybe he I mean everybody doesn't know my champions so maybe he didn't know my champions or maybe this is just his Go to team that he uses in pretty much every fight. So, but yeah, I have UDK, and he doesn't have UDK in his team. It does give me a good, a good amount of like um, handicap against him. So, Taras can definitely kill my team, but Rotos isn't gonna do anything for many turns. And he doesn't have a lot of CC in his team, or a little bit, but basically none of it in practice, because Sifi is not going to sleep my team because of UDK. And after the first turn, then Taras Fears are not going to do anything either. And it's the same with his stuns, like UDK is going to deflect them, so my Rotos should not really get stunned in this fight at all. Unless there is some kind of bug that happens. Yeah, okay. Th this looks very good for me. I'm not sure if I should attack his Marinska here, because if she does die to day one, that would actually be bad, but... I think she's not gonna die to it. Yeah, okay. It was kind of close, but I didn't want her to die. I want to kill her with the A3 and get the extra turn to kill Sifu right after, the, so that um, they can't keep reviving each other. That's why usually people pick Marit Sky and Sifu together, because Maritska reviving Sifi with passive, and then Sifi reviving Maritska with full turn meter is a devastating combination. And Rodos is one of the few ways that you can actually deal with that pretty well. That's why in Classic Arena defense, or one of the reasons why UDK is so popular, UDK is more popular than Necret or Datsus in top platinum arena right now. Almost every team is using UDK, which is part of the reason why I'm having so hard time, because I'm not able to deal with those teams. I don't have like um, Turwald or Taras or like those champions that people usually use to deal with UDK, so...
if this guy picked slightly different team, I'm not sure if he has Harima, but if he picked Harima and UDK in that same team, then it would have been way harder for me. Or like, um, or lockout at least. I assume that he probably has at least lockout or Harima, one of them. He could have picked all of them. He could have picked Aras, Harima, wait, Sifi. Oh yeah, then he couldn't get Maritska. But may maybe he could have gone without Maritska. Just go Taras, Harima, Sifi, UDK and Lockout. That would be the worst team for me to deal with, basically. And I guess I'm pretty much meeting that team or slight variation of it very often. Ah, Bone Armor Sifi. This is kind of unconventional, but I do like this kind of choice. If he does have it at 6 star, then it might even be able to survive Baron Nukes, which kind of um, changes it a lot for classic arena defense teams, but... He's definitely gonna go before me, so... I want to go with Bolster in my team. Ah, uh, yeah, this is basically kind of what I was talking about that the last guy should have used. Even though he had better champions on paper, but uh, this slight adjustment makes it way harder for me. Well, maybe I can still stand a chance, but it is a very hard fight, you know. It kind of depends how the Ukko stuns go, or maybe he gets polymorphed, but... This is not looking very good for me. I mean, it's not totally impossible that I can't win this fight. If he had some bigger speed threat in this team, like some Nuker that could one-shot my Rotos at the start of the fight, then I would be more like... Um, Maybe even George in this fight would have been good against me instead of the Rotos, but... This team might not kill my team instantly, so... Well, he did do a lot of damage on the Dodgers though, but... I'm not sure if I even get Necrot protection on him, if it's gonna be enough. Wait, this kill hits enemies once. Well, if I did the double hit with A2, then maybe the Rotos Ah, uh, it probably would have died. I was thinking that it does have the increased defense, so it might not even die to the double hit because... Um, it would, Yeah, it would have the increased defense, and Rotos had the increased defense on him, but it was so low HP that it probably would have died to the double hit. I should have done it first. Come on, don't get any stuns. Okay, th th that's okay. I do have the attack buff, maybe I can kill it. It's not full HP. No, well, kind of close. Well, it should definitely die now and maybe the Rotos as well, yeah. Okay, th this is actually looking very good. And even the Harima got stunned, which is perfect for me. The Ukko might still be able to revive the team, but the status A1 is going to do double hit, and the second hit might just kill the Ukko before it gets a turn. Yeah. If you have somebody polymorphed and, and the sheep gets killed with the multi-hit skill, then it can still die after the polymorph, which is kind of an interesting mechanic. I do like it. I'm not sure if that was intentional by Plarium or Oversight, 
which often happens with them. But I think it's a good it is a good mechanic in the game. But also, when you kill, when there's effects that um, proc if you get kills, like let's say Protoss A3 gives him extra turn if you kill a target, it should definitely proc when you kill a polymorph target. And there's many other mechanics like that, not just Protoss A3. So. Even masteries and many other champion skills as well. I'm pretty sure we fought this guy. Isn't this the, the guy who always uses a uh, bomb team against me? I'm pretty sure this is the guy last time I fought that um, I wasn't able to find my champions in time and it picked Kai Morin. Oh, maybe it's not him. He's not going with bomb team. Yeah, maybe I'm confusing him with other guy. <laughs> Almost big team over Staltos. That would have been funny. Yeah, let's not go with Ecclesia. Um, because I can't ban the UDK, I need to go with two tanky revivers and not just one, so... Yeah, let's just go with the Python. I might still use Ukko as well, but... Um, I won't be able to use like both Ukko and Necret or Ukko and some support that isn't a tanky reviver. M maybe I will go with Arix against this guy and go with Triple Nuker. That would be kind of interesting. It depends what he picks here. Oh, Helicat. Uh, well, I can't ban, ban his UDK. So the Helicat and UDK combination is not gonna leave me a lot of room to do damage on him. I, I, w I could go with Ukko or UDK, either one here. But whichever I pick, he's gonna ban anyway, so... Maybe I should have actually, now that I know his full team, maybe I should have gone with, uh, not with Python, but Ukko and UDK here. Well, it is still kind of... Yeah, actually, never mind. I do want to have some heals because this will be a long fight and maybe I'm able to survive long enough that my Rotos can do some damage through the UDK. Though the Helicat uh, block damage is gonna be very like annoying combination. He's gonna save it till the stone skin ends and it's not gonna be fun. And yeah, he wouldn't be able to do this if I also had a lockout in my team, but I don't so I must ban his lockout and he can ban my UDK. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter because um, he has both block damage and stone skin. Well, I hope you guys are having fun in Live Arena because for me it's not as fun as it used to be at the start of the Live Arena. I guess I was enjoying getting easy fights and fighting teams or 
accounts without great champions, but now it's not as easy anymore, so... I think this will be a very long fight and I will just lose. Should I just um, surrender this? Yeah, maybe this will just be a slow loss anyway, so... Now, let's, let's try it, let's try it. I do have the heals, so I will be able to hang in for a while, but the issue is that his Rotos is gonna stack the A2, and he's gonna block Revive, and my Rotos is not really able to stack the A2. It's gonna take forever for the Stone Skin to end on UDK, and even after that, the Helicat is gonna put those block damage buffs, so... This is kind of the privilege you have if you're faster in live arena. That it is an insane advantage and... Enemies will always be like... On defensive if you can go first and... If you have lockout on your team. If we both had UDK in this fight then... I'm pretty confident that... I would win it, but I don't, so. I just don't think my status can really kill his CV through like all the other stuff in the team. If, if I had a stronger AoE Nuker than maybe a like Taras or whatever, but Stalos is not quite enough. I mean, there's only a couple champions that could do it anyway, but not him. But definitely having Stalos in this fight is kind of good because at least I'm able to do some damage outside of the UDK. Maybe if I have enough damage to kill the Sifi here now, then it could be a big deal, but against the other Sifis this wasn't enough. Yeah, it wasn't even close, so... And by the time he gets his AoE nukes back, even though he's like 260 speed or whatever, then the Sifi is gonna be full HP. Oh, that extra turn was actually... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. He died anyway. He can weak on weak hit on Rotos, so... I thought that there was a good chance that he would not die, but... He did a good amount of damage and didn't weak hit, I guess. Well, at least we're rid of the stone skin now, but I'm pretty sure he will have the block damage up now at this point. If, if not now, then the next turn after this he will definitely have it. Okay, yeah, he had it. Man, I do wish I would have Sifi. I mean, she used to be my most wanted champion for a very long time. And I think she was kind of out of the meta for a while, actually. I mean, she wasn't terrible, but... With, um, with the buff to... Or not buff, but when we got Taras and Marichka into the game, she is very good combination in those teams. And now in Live Arena, how Live Arena works, Rodos... Not Rotos, Sifi is kind of um, 
back to the meta or she was in the meta but now she's top meta again she's definitely the best reviver again she wasn't for a while and duchess definitely was better but now she's like far better than duchess in this current meta The issue is that in general teams are very tanky and it's hard to kill defense teams but then if you're not locking out the enemy and threatening them with speed and um, if enemy does have something like Baron or charge it then they will definitely be able to kill your team regardless how tanky it is so Darts is kind of um, not that threatening anymore yeah, we lost it in the end. Maybe if I was able to one-shot the Sifi at one point with Salus, I might have been able to turn it, but even then I m might have still lost the fight. But Salus was still kind of decent here. I definitely, having a nuker with two AoE skills, would be able to win some of these fights for me. Or if I had something like George it or wh whatever, but anyway. At least we put out a little bit of fight with him. But the win-loss ratio today is not anything to like be happy about. So It's so annoying that every time somebody leaves you can't see the fights. That's why I'm usually trying to not leave the fights, but sometimes I forget to do it. Anyway, I know that many of you were kind of, um, you like Stalus, and I do think he's kind of decent champion, but he's definitely not a top tier champion. And where I put him on the list, like um, in the middle of C tier, I think he's very fair. It could have even been lower, I think. I was very fair with this ranking, but he's definitely good, I would say. Karatokan, I mean, you kind of want to have Yumeko with him, but he can do kind of interesting thing, things that he can ignore the passives and maybe kill Taras or whatever, but yeah. I, I do like these rankings. The one thing that you could argue that maybe maybe Shashar could be lower here, but in some fights, if enemy doesn't have immunity, then Shashar can basically solo some teams so even if it's very rarely if ever but that's why he placed higher in the list but yeah i will probably make another video today about the shard pulls or maybe i will not if i don't get good rng but uh that's it for today and who knows maybe tomorrow i will have harim on my video or Maybe I will have a booked status at least, we will see. But that's it and see ya.